This is the kind of day I live for, man. Ridgeline hiking off trail. Huge river valleys, glaciated peaks on both sides. It's about two hours till sunset. I am almost up to the top of this ridgeline. Can't wait to see what's up there. Man, this view is ridiculous. You guys gotta check out this view I set up. So I can wake up in the morning and just look right down that valley. And I wanna have it line up so there's clouds in the valley. And then hopefully the sunrise light is hitting the face of Glacier Peak. And then there's just ridiculous clouds up in the sky. That's my ideal conditions. So I'm shooting this one at 135 millimeters. So first I'm just gonna get the focal point dialed in. Single point spot focus. I'll put it about a third into the vertical. I always just try to find a highly contrasted line. So these trees down here, where they're white and snow, hitting right there, I'm just gonna zoom in there. And then I'll use my back button autofocus. And since there's so much contrast in those trees, it grabs them easily. And then I'll just grab my focal ring and dial it slightly back and forth to make sure that autofocus nailed it. All right, so it looks like the autofocus is spot on. A lot of times, this time of night when there's pretty low light, the autofocus won't nail it. So that's why I like to use that focal ring. So here's a tip that you can use when out shooting that can really help you with your composition. So obviously you have the three by two crop factor on the back of your camera, but when I'm out shooting, I'm always looking forward to the actual crop that I'm going to use when I get back home on the computer. So for this image, if I crop it, I'm going to remove all of the dead space. So you can see there's dead space up at the top, and there's a lot of dead space or repeating space down at the bottom. So when I'm looking into this one to edit it, I'm probably going to crop it something like that, and then I'll work some light painting in here from the side. So if you're out shooting and you're thinking to yourself that you don't have the right image, you might actually have the right image, but it's hidden somewhere within the wide angle image that you're actually shooting. So always work on cropping stuff down, and you could even work on cropping it down even more if you thought something like this would even look better. And that's the nice part about shooting really large megapixel cameras is that you have all this wiggle room that you can always choose something that looks even better in your final edit. All right, so F11 for this one, I'm gonna go with ISO 200 just to make the shutter speed a little bit faster. And then pull the histogram up, expose all the way to the right. But since I'm shooting this reddish pink color, if I expose all the way to the right, it'll actually slightly blow out red. So I usually just grab exposure compensation, shoot an aperture priority and just back it down one third to two thirds of a stop. And then exposed to the right is now backed off pure white, but the red channel, which you can't see here, is gonna be touched right up to the edge. So we'll see if I was right with the actual guess there. I've shot this so many times that it's I just know where the histogram is going to be. You can see the red is now pushed right up to the edge there because the combination of red, green, blue is what gives you your top histogram here. So sometimes one of those channels, either red, green, or blue, will be brighter than the combination of them, which is your RGB histogram. But Live View only has that RGB. So whenever you're shooting really bright colors, such as bright red, bright orange, bright yellow, exposed to the right on this RGB histogram, and then back it off, say one third to two thirds of a stop. And that will expose perfectly for those bright colors. So now I'm gonna check the focus, zoom in here, and I wanna check exactly where I focus, that looks sharp. Then I wanna check the furthest thing away, which is Glacier Peak, that looks sharp. And then I'll check the closest thing in the scene, which I can just see it down there and it's right down the bottom left. And that looks sharp as well. And now that I've covered all my bases with the focal point, the furthest thing and the closest thing, I know that everything between all that's sharp too. So here's the shot I took when we were climbing down off the summit of Glacier Peak. And the spot that I'm taking the shot from right now is right back here on this mountain range right here. So I'm camped up at the top of here shooting towards Glacier Peak. Here's another view of it that's a little bit more zoomed in, and here's the ridge line that I'm camping on. You can see Mount Rainier just looming back here in the background at 14,500 some feet, just a massive peak. 
So here's one of the raw files that I still haven't edited yet. And remember when I was talking about Sloan Peak, that's right here. And I was shooting from the base camp the night before we hiked up to the top and climbed Glacier Peak, shooting out here and got some really good conditions. And I just perched up here for a while and took different shots as all these different cloud layers rolled through. And then here is my crew that I was climbing with hiking up to Glacier Peak. And you can see where the base camp is right up here. And then the next morning when we climbed it, we hiked around here and then we hiked right up this face to the summit. Really, really fun climbing out there. So I'm shooting at almost 200 millimeters and I'm zoomed in on Glacier Peak. What I'm thinking about for this one is cutting the bottom off and the top off and using this single exposure as a long wide pano because Glacier Peak's getting hit with this side light. And when I'm looking at this by itself, that area in the middle actually looks pretty good. I might be able to work some black and white in there as well. We'll see. But I actually like those lenticular clouds moving in. So I'll take one like this. And since I'm going to crop off the bottom and most of the top, I'm just going to put my single point spot focus right on the peak. Back button autofocus. I look sharp. Shoot at F11. It's going to keep my shutter speed at 1 over 4. So I'm gonna go up in ISO a little bit, and then I'm going to put five second timer on. This should dampen out any shake, and having a little bit faster shutter speed should keep that mountain sharp. So the longest focal length I bring with me on these trips is a 200 millimeter. So this is a 24 to 200, and I really like this lens, but my old lens shot all the way out to 300. So now what I have to do is I have to visualize the actual 300 crop on this. So I'll just max my lens out to where I want to shoot it. And then I was just talking about, I'm going to crop this one way in. So that'll essentially give me the view of 300 millimeters. And this is an 8,000 pixel wide resolution on this camera. So I can easily crop way in and take a pano that way. Back in the day, you'd have to take a pano where you take multiple different shots and stitch them together. But now that the cameras have such high megapixel count, especially these new full frames like the Z7 or the D850, any of Nikon's full frame cameras or any of Sony's full frame have ridiculous megapixel count. So you could shoot 200 and get away with 300 millimeters in digital zoom because you can just crop in when you get back. I think that's pretty cool looking up on that peak. So I might just crop way in there. Man, those are some awesome ridge lines. I've hiked up on those ridge lines right there. And then when we climbed the peak, we climbed right up that ridge, across this snow field, and then to the top there. I love just climbing out in these mountains all the time and just learning the landscape because now I can hit trails, off trail, on trail, ridge lines, and just traverse anywhere I want out here. Not even really looking at a map that much anymore. It just makes it so much easier to put together trips. I want to get out into this range this summer, but I'm going to fire a few more here because the light's actually hitting nicely on the edge of Glacier Peak. I might also take some back there. At least that light's a little bit more colorful, but still a sweet night out here that's the crazy thing about landscape photography if you weren't into landscape photography you would be out here just like whoa this is amazing but once you get into landscape for a while you're like ah oh, i wish the sunset was a little bit better just got to sit back and enjoy it all right so let's see how that one looked man looks pretty sharp i'm gonna drop this to f8 Move my focus point right onto the front of that ridge line right there. Refocus. The reason I dropped it to F8 because I wanted to get one over 20th, make a little bit faster shutter speed. And I'm gonna go even faster up to ISO 400. Give me one over 40th. Because it wasn't quite sharp. Sometimes I find that faster shutter speeds will just give you a sharper image, even if there's not wind kicking through. You can see I'm shooting at 200 millimeters. If you wanted to shoot 200 millimeters handheld, a good rule of thumb for handheld shooting is you just take, for the shutter speed, one over your focal length. So if I was shooting at 200 millimeters, 
I would take one two hundredth or faster shutter speed. And that should keep it fairly sharp. But to get up that fast this time of day, I'd have to go way up. But I think this will do because I'm on a tripod. So let's see if this one's sharper than that last one. I always just flick back and forth through images when they're zoomed in. And then I can see which one was sharper. It's still not quite as sharp as I'd like. I wonder if I go up to F16 if that'll help. I know it's because I'm just using this crop cheat code or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to use the manual focus up here. Go back and forth. Maybe the autofocus isn't hitting it just because it's pretty low light at this point. Once the light gets low, the autofocus doesn't nail it sometimes. All right. Let's try it on that one. We'll see. It's always just good to know how to troubleshoot with all your lenses and all your camera bodies. That's why I only like to own two lenses and one camera body because then troubleshooting is always super easy. Let's take another look at this one. That's definitely way sharper. I wanted to give you guys a quick heads up. Right now, if you join my email list, I have a 10 day free trial, which gives you unlimited access to all of my photography courses. Now these courses teach every single technique that I use as a full-time wilderness photographer. So you'll learn camera technique, you'll learn photo editing, photo organization, composition, how to find shots in the field. You'll be able to access and watch dozens of my expeditions out into the wilderness where I take these photos and teach you how to create them from start to finish. I designed this school to be the perfect learning experience, something that I wish would have existed when I started wilderness photography, landscape photography, and outdoor photography 10 years ago. So if you'd like to join my email list, you'll get this 10-day free trial. You'll also get a bunch of other good stuff, including access to my PDF library, which includes all of my photography guides, which you can take out in the field to shoot with you. you can check out the link down below this video to join and sign up. You can cancel anytime. I'll never hold your email address hostage. I want to provide you with the best learning experience possible. Now let's get back to the video.